Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to do a quick little project. We're going to add some lighting to some Walther's passenger cars here. So these are these ones here. Bud 46 seat coach. Uh, these are older cars. I've had them for quite a while. Um, and honestly, I just kind of assumed after all the Rapido stuff um, that, you know, they'd have some kind of lighting in them. I, I was a little disappointed, actually, when they didn't. Um, of course, Walther's does sell a lighting kit. Uh, so that's not, um, it's not like there's no lighting available. But uh, they don't come with it out of the box. At least these older ones don't. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to add them. So let's have a look and uh, see if we can add some lighting uh, on the cheap. So just to go over kind of a list of materials here. So for this, I am using just LED strip lights. These are warm white. Uh, these are actually used ones that I've recycled out of an old project. Um, so I've got a couple of strips there and one that's got the, the dark PCB. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're all more or less the same, or at least in these particular cases. Um, so yeah. That's uh, that's what we're going to use to actually do the lighting. Uh, we are also going to use some resistors because just out of the box, uh, these are very, very bright inside of a passenger car. So, yeah, if you just run them at, uh, at like the voltage, well, first of all, DCC voltage would be technically more than the 12 volts in most cases. Um, but also that these in such a small space is going to be incredibly bright you could go with oh, could go with smaller sections of them less sections spread them out more um but i want as even a light as possible so i'm just using uh in this case it's a 3k resistor uh to drop down the voltage uh, we are also going to use some surface mount uh bridge rectifiers so these will make it so that it doesn't actually matter what direction on the track that it's put on or the fact that it's DCC. Uh, in theory, it should also allow it to work fine on DC in either direction. Uh, so these are surface mount bridge rectifiers. Um, I just got these off eBay. Yeah, really any ones will do. You could even make your own with diodes. These are nice just because it's nice and compact to fit in the passenger cars. And then the last thing is, I also found these nice and small uh, capacitors. These are uh, 470 uh, microfarad, uh, 16 volt, which should be just enough. Uh, and that will help give us constant lighting so they don't flicker if the track's dirty or anything else like that. So without further ado, let's uh, get into the car. All right, so... These Walther's passenger cars, um, the easiest way to get into them is kind of, if you give them a bit of a twist, it's kind of unnerving. And this one, I've got another one I've already put lighting into. Uh, it's already been apart a couple times, so it opens easier, but this one I've never cracked open. So you can start to kind of get under there. There are tabs. Can probably start to see them showing up there. I just want to kind of try to work those. There we go. Ooh. And we're in. So yeah, it's just these little tabs here. They're mounted on the roof. Um, as you can see, they survived. And then we have the inside of our passenger car. Uh, one of the things that I'll definitely give uh, Walter's uh, props for is they've actually already got power from the trucks. So the, the trucks are conductive. Um, there's little pads underneath and that passes them up to these tabs right here. So it makes these really easy to retrofit with any kind of lighting. Uh, which we are going to do today. So in this case, 
in there you could just solder directly to them but i'm going to use some old brass uh rail joiners and that way we can make it removable now you'll probably need to do a little fine tuning Pretty sure, actually, in the last ones I had to spread out a little bit. These ones I think I need to pinch in just a hair. Just so they're going to get a decent grab on those tabs. Okay, so there we go. You can see that it's just a snug fit. Just go right on those tabs, and that's just about perfect. So our basic circuit diagram is, so we've got what we can essentially treat as AC coming off the tracks. Uh, anybody who's not familiar with electronics, if the camera focuses here well enough, there should be like a little AC symbol on two of the leads, which in this case are the top two, and your plus and minus, your, your positive and negative here on the bottom on this chip. Uh, assuming I'm holding it the right way. I was holding it upside down for the text anyway. So, yeah, there's your your AC on the bottom, negative and positive terminals on the top. So that's going to be the very first thing we want because these are electrolytic uh, capacitors. They are polarized. So it matters which way you put them in. If you put them in backwards, they can blow up. Uh, so you don't want to be doing that. So basically, yeah, we'll have the uh, bridge rectifier, capacitor, and then the resistor to the light strip. And uh, I've actually just got some old basic copper stranded wiring. This I've got some slightly heavier wire on it. I'm probably actually going to take this off here. Um, this is what I was using to test, but it's less flexible so it's a little harder to try to cram into a passenger car so fairly thin wire uh like these are leds you we're not going to be pulling a lot of current through this uh this will be plenty okay now that the soldering irons were all warmed up i i removed the wires that were on this one before um so we're kind of starting fresh so i'm going to start by taking uh, a resistor and the capacitor and we're going to just do it the kind of the quick and dirty way we're going to try to use the leads from these components as much as possible uh, realistically um, there's there's more there than we're going to need Just gonna put a block of wood under so I don't melt my cutting board. For anyone not overly familiar with soldering, it always helps to just tin the wires a little bit. Should just be a light touch with the soldering iron. And we're on. Now, we need to match the, well, so two things. It's uh, electrolytic capacitor, so we need to make sure that the negative is on the negative side, positive is on the positive side, and then the same thing with the bridge rectifier. I'm going to use my little helping hand stand because uh, things like this bridge rectifier do get quite warm as you're soldering. No reason you couldn't use this more, I'm just, don't. Now we're going to see if we can get really lazy and use this lead on this capacitor. I might be pushing my luck here, but we're going to see how this works out. Now 
There we have it. There's our basic circuit. Now you could certainly insulate this. You could use some heat shrink or you could even get really goopy and use some like hot melt or something like that. Reality is this is going to be stuck to the roof of the car. There's enough space there. Shorting is not really going to be an issue, but if you're concerned about it, you can always go that route. Just going to tin the wires here. This is actually old Atlas switch wire that was from a layout 10 years ago now. Also not used to trying to solder while keeping the back of my head out of a camera shot, so that adds a little extra level of difficulty to this. Yeah, there we go. Actually, while I've got these nice long wires attached, just gonna hook it up to a bench supply. Okay, so this is only 12 volts. You can see that uh, Oh, that was a tad concern. Um, especially under the fairly bright lights. Uh, they're really dim. I'll just turn off the lights for a second here. So you can see they're definitely lit, but it's a lot lower than their full intensity brightness. That's just a 12 volt supply. You can also see they're still glowing a little bit there. Um, it's a 12 volt supply, so it'll be uh, quite a bit... Um, or actually not quite a bit, but there is a slightly higher voltage on DCC, usually around 14 to 15 volts. So, um, yeah, it will be a tad brighter. So this is the basic orientation I'm looking for. Where, I'll just get that position a little better there in frame. So it's nice that the capacitor and everything can kind of just sit in there. If you really wanted to, you could tuck them somewhere else too. Um, there are there are other options there, but that'll do. So we'll need, just for ease, say about that much wire. This is definitely more eyeballing than science. A little bit more wire on the end here. This is what we will solder to those rail joiners. We have one right here. Okay. Yeah, definitely gonna need to tin that a little bit ahead. Especially these older brass ones, they'll probably have a little bit of an oxide layer on them. So you need the, the rosin in the core, kind of get a good connection. There we go. Good, good connection. I don't even know how old these brass connectors are. These are probably off old Bachman track. These could even be going back to my first layout as a young child. A good portion of my track was brass at that point, and probably the rest of it was the old steel stuff. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, it's basically complete and ready to go in. So we can install it here and we'll give it a quick test on the track. I'll show you what it looks like before we uh, glue it into place on the roof. Okay, so we'll just try a little shaky cam here because I'm not grabbing the tripod right this second for just this quick test, but here we have her. It's on, it's working, and you can see actually if I lift it off, it stays lit for quite a while. This is also a good demonstration. So this is... This is with that 3 kilo ohm resistor. 
uh, to drop that voltage down. You can see it's it's quite well lit. Uh, if you use the straight 12 volt, which you could certainly do if you really wanted to, but it would be super, super bright in there. A little overwhelming. All right, back to the bench. Okay, so our last stage here is to actually get the lights uh, mounted into the roof. Uh, there is a right way and a wrong way, if you want to call it that. Uh, these vents go at the end uh, without the vestibule. So uh, just make sure you kind of get that lined up when you put them in. Uh, for this, in this case, I'm going to use Weld Bond. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just a variety of like a PVA glue. I find it's a little thicker though, um, and it definitely holds well, and it dries uh, crystal clear, as they say. Uh, which helps uh, if you are doing anything that involves windows or anything that will block the light. In this case, it's going on the back, so it doesn't matter. Um, also, I'll just point out that although these strips do usually come with adhesive, so if you're using brand new stuff, not recycled stuff like I am, um, they do have an adhesive, but <laughs> honestly, that stuff never has stuck for me. I have always had to come up with some kind of a different um different arrangement a different method of getting them to stick so um even if you are using brand new ones i would seriously think about using uh some other kind of glue or something to just kind of give it that extra little bit of oomph okay try to get this properly placed Now, while this sets up, I'm just going to use these really long clamps. Got a fairly gentle pinching force. That one's actually gentler than the others. I kind of want something a little stronger at the end. If anybody hears screaming in the background, I promise it's just my son and his bouncer having fun. There is no torture going on in the background. Okay, actually gonna see if I can find one more clip for here in the middle, but realistically, once that dries, that will be good enough. So we'll set that aside for a few minutes, let that uh, set up, and then we will be able to get it on the layout. All right, while that glue is drying, I'll just give you guys a quick look at this one. This is one I did earlier. is also how I knew that that black wire is a little too heavy. Uh, now this one is just a tad different in that this one I uh, plan on using as the end of train car basically all the time. Uh, Walther's includes these nice little uh, tail uh, markers but they're not lit just like now the rest of it. Uh, but they do go all the way through. So I was able to run some fine wire, just use some like DCC hookup wire, and soldered two surface mount LEDs in behind those uh, clear uh, lenses. So you'll see, I did notch out here a little bit too, just to get that wire to run through. Uh, you'll see when the whole train's running, uh, it looks pretty go good, and uh, those... Uh, tail uh, end of train lights uh, light up really well. The one thing is, uh, and there's there's better ways to design the circuit. I know that, I just didn't spend the time. Um, with those extra LEDs, the capacitor doesn't run as long as it does in these ones. It's not really a big deal, at least on my track right now. I may change my opinion later, but uh, yeah. That one has a little extra feature on it. There are also options you can do with uh, things like latching reed switches and make them so you can turn them off with ma on and off with magnets, kind of like uh, Rapido's uh, factory lighting. But uh, for me anyway, the reality is the primary operations of my layout is going to be freight. So these are just kind of decoration. They're going to run, run around in a circle basically. Um, so yeah, that is the lighting. 
and uh, now we'll go to a few uh, glamour shots of the whole train completed. Well, hopefully you found this little video uh, helpful. And if you did like it, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. Uh, you can also follow me on uh, my other social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, uh, as well as Facebook. And you can always follow, also follow along on my website, tinkeringgeek.com. Uh, and until next time, keep tinkering.